Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, I wanted to touch on a subject that has been brought to my attention via the internet, but it's actually something that I think I kind of noticed before I'd even heard about it on the internet. And um, it's not really too big of a topic, but it's a topic that I've seen out there. And uh, the topic is Walmart Vinyl Records. And the question within the topic is the sound quality. And now really one reason why I'm making this video is to kind of get more people's input on it. I've asked a lot of people online. I've asked a lot of people on Facebook, which is also online. Um, I've asked people face to face who I know who collect records. I've asked people at the record store. And um, there's not really a consensus. Um, uh, really, there is a consensus, and it's generally that Walmart has decent records. And so now I know that if there is a difference within the records, there's going to be a lot of variables and different uh, reasons why that may be. And this will all be kept in mind as we try to figure out if there is any validity to this. And now, before we get going, I'm going to go ahead and run through the gear that I'll be using, just so you know that I'm not throwing these records on some Crosley Cruiser with the built-in speakers. Don't do that. So up front, we have the Denon AVR3313 receiver. It has loads of features and capabilities I've never even used, but one of my favorite things about this is the ridiculously amazing phono preamp that it has built in. It also has a chassis ground plug, which is pretty convenient. It can push 125 watts through 8 ohms at 0.05 THD with two channels driven. It has dual sub outs, which I'm using only one of, which brings us over to my sub setup. This is an Infinity AVS-10 active subwoofer, which is pushing two power acoustic gothic 12-inch subs wired to 4 ohms in a ported box. The main speakers are Pioneer SPBS-21s, designed by the famous Alex Jones, wired with equal lengths of 10-gauge oxygen-free wire with banana plugs. Okay, so now as for turntables, this is kind of where the plot thickens for me. Uh, this is where, I'm going to be honest, um, I have a stack here... And there's quite a bit of albums in here, which are all from Walmart. One of them sounds amazing. And I have to be honest with you, the rest sound like crap. Uh, there could be different reasons for that. We'll get into that. But um, I was never really big into uh, record collecting, like I've said before. Um, I'm This is new to me. So the first turntable I ever got, after I had purchased this Deep Purple at Goodwill for only a dollar... Um, I think I went directly from there and I bought a Crosley Cruiser. Don't do that. I put it on there and I played it and it played just about as I thought it would. You know, it didn't sound horrible for about the first minute and then it just, it sounded horrible. It, the speed was off. Everything was, I didn't even know what was going on because I wasn't really, you know, too familiar with turntables at the time. So I went ahead and took it back, got my refund, and I think I went straight from there back to go look for more records i don't know why but uh and then i found this one so after i found this i was like all right you know i'm gonna go back to walmart and i'm gonna buy that audio technica lp60 that i was looking at or lp go whatever it's called and um i was really impressed with it not gonna lie it wasn't too bad so from there i started buying a lot more albums and uh most of the ones that i were buying were original albums you know uh from back in the day have a pretty good record store here close by and also during that time i had bought these albums from walmart and i'm going to be completely honest all of these sound really bad now led zeppelin 3 has a very unique sound um they didn't record this in their normal studio you can look that up online that's pretty cool actually you can understand why it has that tone surrealistic pillow any version that I've heard kind of sounds the same, so it kind of is what it is. I don't know if just the master of that isn't very good, but sounds like crap, sounds like crap, sounds like crap, and I've heard them before, and you know, they don't really sound like that. And also the Black Pumas, you guessed it, sounds like crap. So during this time, I was uh, actually refurbishing and completely redoing an Akio CP1000A turntable. Um, I'd gotten that finished, and I went ahead and sold the Audio-Technica. 
Now, the Accio CP1000, I really, really liked and I really enjoyed. And during this time, I started to learn about cleaning your records, which is something I wasn't really doing very well at the beginning. As you may or may not be aware, uh, there are little tiny grooves going around a record, and that's actually what the stylus goes into and it reproduces the sound by vibrations and all that. I'm not going to go down that. But... If you don't clean your records properly, and we're talking at a microscopic level. Okay, so sorry if uh, color grade and everything just kind of changed. I think my phone is on its last days. Uh, it would only record for like nine seconds. It's not hot. I, I don't know what's going on. It's doing a bunch of weird stuff where uh, the Wi-Fi keeps kicking on and off. And I, I think it's planned obsolescence for the old Samsung. But what was I talking about? So what happens is the dust and everything gets down into these little grooves, and I'm guessing the stylus just kind of pushes it in there more. So maybe these just have to be cleaned very well, like hypersonically or whatnot. I'm not really sure. That is a very good possibility. But after all of this, I found this very, very nice MDS turntable, which has a lot more features, and it actually has the original stylus on it. And so I went and I bought this. And this is kind of another reason that's really pushing me to make this uh, video. I listened to this on that MDS and it sounded amazing. It completely changed my mind on the way vinyl sounds with the setup that I have now. So the dynamic range, the depth, you, you can hear every little bit and nuance of Les Claypool's bass in this. You can hear everything from everybody. Um, it really, really changed my perspective of, you know, how vinyl sounds. So now, in going through here, there is one thing that really sticks out to me and why I wanted to do this too, is that why does the Black Pumas sound so horrible? It seems like, you know, Okay, these can just be dirty and maybe have to be cleaned and stuff like that. But um, when it comes to this, I always kind of kept this clean and it just doesn't make any sense to me. So there is one other theory that I have here. And a lot of the things I'm hearing is about colored vinyl. So I've actually heard that colored vinyl like this doesn't sound as good as any of the black vinyl. Now is that the next question for us? <laughs> Does colored vinyl sound different than black vinyl? I don't know. It seems like you can chalk these other ones up to other reasons, but they definitely don't sound as good, in my opinion. And this one really upsets me because I love this album. Uh, I've listened to all of these albums on the MDS, and they sound the same. I've also listened to all of these original albums that I have on the MDS, and they sound amazing on it. And a lot of these, I haven't done any more cleaning than just uh, with a microfiber towel. So, I mean, I think that's something that's kind of to be considered. Now, I know that Walmart is really big on the special colored discs. That's kind of like their exclusive thing. If that's true, that uh, colored discs don't sound as good as the black ones, that could maybe be what's going on here. But um, I definitely noticed that for some reason, most vast majority that I got from Walmart, I don't think they sound as good. Uh, that's just kind of my, you know, conclusion to all of this. Um, but we do have an album that came from there that sounds absolutely amazing. I don't know if it's down to where they're being pressed at or what. I noticed this one says Made in Germany. The Led Zeppelin 3, I believe, yes, also has the same made in Germany. And now, Led Zeppelin 3, I want to go back and reiterate, I don't think that this album sounds bad. And this one is from Walmart as well. It's a very, very distinct sound. If you know the album, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't think I've ever had this on CD or digital form, so um, I don't really know. But there are other digital forms that I've heard it on. And um, to me, it sounds the same. So I'm going to say, you know, the majority of the ones that I got from Walmart don't sound good. These two sound great. And um, I don't know. Did I 
jump into the audio file snob uh, region here? Or uh, am I nitpicking? I don't know. Let me know the experience that you've had, if you've had experience with these, uh, as well as Target, I've heard, has been another one, but I haven't purchased anything from Target in a long time, so I wouldn't know. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think, what you've heard, what you've experienced. Uh, if you like the content, go ahead and subscribe. Leave a like, share, that'd be awesome. But uh, that's it for now. Thank you guys very much for watching, and uh, have a keep... Have a great keeping them turntables. Keep on trucking. Wheels, truck, turning. I don't know. It's all there. You uh, you guys can go ahead and piece that together and uh, have a good one. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>